Now when you get to here on a big derby loop, these are loops. That's exactly what it is. It's a loop. You go to the right, and right there is site one. To get to site two, you got two ways. You can go kind of clockwise all the way around the big loop, about three miles. Or you can do a quick way and go this way to your left. And don't go around the curve down there, but you'll see on your left side where the trail goes up into the woods. You go that way, and you're going to climb the little hill, and Site 2 is basically right up there, real quick. So it depends on how quick you want to get to Site 2 if you got Site 2 reserved. Um, but this is a big loop. If you go this way, counterclockwise, and roll it, want to do the whole thing to get to Site 2, so you can do some backpacking, it's, like I say, it's about 3 miles. But it's, it's a nice little hike. Okay, I'm at Battelle Darby Creek, and I'm going to go through the four campsites they have on the backpacking trail. It opened up a few years ago. Site 1 and 2 are on the Big Darby Loop, and Sites 3 and 4 are on the Little Darby Loop. Ah, I see some deer down there. See something moving. Alright, Site 1 site to get to if you do not like heavy backpack and through the woods site one is the site to get because it's only a few hundred miles from the road uh, and it's right here on the trail like I said this is site one you got a picnic table you got a pit and site one is also near the water so if you want to do some type of water filtration or you need water for whatever reason, you are near the water. You even got this little area right here. If you want to set your tent up back here, you can do that and give you a little bit more privacy from those on the trail. And the river is right through here. I'm not going to walk on down through there because it looks like it's a muddy mess. But you can get to the river down through here and it's just right over there. Is the river. Big Darby Creek. You're a woodpecker. So this is a site, like I say, site number one. If you don't want to really hike that far. There's no hills, it's basically a grass mowed path from the road back to here. Really easy. And like I say, if you're not up for a lot of walking or hiking, so forth, this would be the site to go to. Um, you can set your tent here if you want, you can set it back there. It doesn't really matter. And you got this nice open area to enjoy at night before you take your night hike. Um, can't really tell, but there is a little hill over there. So if you were to go around it, but there is a way if you don't want to hike up a hill, you can actually just stay on the grass area the whole time around, it's a big loop. But if you want to stay on the backpacking trail, you're gonna go through the woods up there, which will take you up to site two, which will be the next stop. Okay, we are at site two, which is also on the Big Darby Loop. Now, there's a couple ways to get to this site. Um, when you come back, when you come onto the trail, Big Darby Loop, you're gonna hit going left to right. Um, and to the right was where uh, site number one was at. If you go right, you're going to go counterclockwise around the, the backpacking trail. And it's going to be a lot longer to get to site two. I'm going to guess maybe a three mile hike. Um, but if you turn to the left and go clockwise around the, big, uh, the trail, you can probably get to site two in 10, 15 minutes. That's going to be under a mile. 
So it depends on when you, if you're at site two, if you want to get here quickly, go to the left and just follow the trail counterclockwise or clockwise. If you want to do some hiking, go counterclockwise and it'll be probably around three miles to get to here. But again, you got a fire pit, you got a picnic table, and you got a lot of room here. Set up your tent. You got a lot of open area here to play in. Well, you do on white site one too. Site one also. And actually, you can go that way and they'll take you out to, um, I can't think of the name of the road. It's just right over there, probably one, 200 yards. Uh, but site two is really cool. It's a nice little site. You got room if you want to play some games with your kids, your family, you know, whatever. But then there's one little added bonus to site two. Uh, let's see if I can find a quick way to get to it. You have some neighbors. You should be able to get through here. Well, let's go around this way. If you're not superstitious or anything like that, it won't bother you. But you have some neighbors. One good thing about your neighbors is they're going to be quiet. You'll never hear a peep out of them. It's just right across this little pile of woods right here. See, if you come in here and you go clockwise to get here quicker, you gotta come up right here. But, here are your neighbors. Your site, oh, see there is a little path there. I thought there was. And I'll take you over to your site just right inside the trees. But here's your neighbors. Little cemetery. So that is site number two. Now site number three and four are over on the Little Darby Loop. All right, we are on the Little Darby Loop Trail now. And this is where you come in after you hike back the trail. This used to be a Boy Scout camp. And uh, I know they have some group camping events right here in this big open area, but this is not one of the camp sites. I've actually camped in this big area here with some groups. The only porta potty back here. It has its pit, fire pit. Got a few benches, a few tables to work on, carry your meals. There's a little Darby over there. Got this pavilion here. That's another little grill. 
some picnic tables. Big open area. Oh, I set my tent right over there in that corner. No wood. <laughs> Looks like somebody left a tent too. But it's fun when you when you're with a group of people, you're all back, you're camping and stuff, and got a big old nice fire going, you're grilling something. Everybody sitting in here, you know, talking, shooting the breeze, whatever. Now, when you get to this spot, the trail goes to the right. Um, and to the right will be campsite three. Again, if you want to do a longer route to get to campsite four, or you can go to the left, and that'll take you a quicker shot to campsite four. So, four is to the left. And three is to the right. Though you can go the opposite direction and still get to either one. It's a, it's actually a double loop here. You got a loop here. And then they sort of come together over there. And then you cross a little stream. And then there's another loop over there. And that's where campsite four is at. So these are in a, in a way, it's a loop, but it's two, two loops together. So pick your choice on where you want to go. Three to the right. Four to the left. We're gonna go down here three first. My concern is it's starting to get late and I don't know if people are starting to come in for the night and I don't wanna interrupt anybody. So, we're gonna walk on down here. Most of this loop, 95% of it is grass. When you go onto the other loop over there where St. Four is at, most of that, I'd say about 65% of that is grass. All right, the trail actually goes that way. Continues on around the loop. But this here is the way back to site three. Site three, is, I've camped at this site and I like it. It's nice, it's back away from the trail. Privacy, it's, and it's big. And this is the one to go to site three if you have hammocks. This is the only one that has a hammock set up. And you're right by the water, the little garden. So if you have hammocks, come to site three. Now I will say if you're not experienced in backpacking, if you're new and you're not really seasoned yet in carrying packs, you may not want to come to three or four. Because those two do require a little bit of walking. And this one again has your picnic table. I think it has two sites. You got your pit, and I think you got a place to hang two hammocks. Good, no one's here yet. And you got a little bit of room if you want to play something. Here's your table and your pit. You got a site here. You got a site there. This is where I usually put mine right here. And there's a spot to hang your hammocks. So, like I said, if you have hammocks, select site number three. And I say you got a lot of room here. Right here's access to the to the creek, Little Darby. You go swim in, get water, whatever you want to do. It's right here. Like I said, this is the one I've always come to. Not always by choice, but Site 4 is pretty popular. Um, I think it's, Site 4 is right on the edge of the trail, but it's pretty secluded. And a lot of people like Site 4. I like Site 3 because I'm back here a ways, 
I'm right here by the river. Got a lot of space. Can't beat it. Site three. Okay, now we're gonna head on to site four. All right, when you're on, you're going around the little Darby Loop past site three. It looks like the trail ends right here. It does not. Okay, it goes through these woods probably like 100 feet and then comes back out onto the trail on the other side. So when you come to this, or come to these woods, don't stop. The trail keeps on going and I'll, we'll walk through here together. And it goes, like I say, it goes through about 100 feet through the woods and then it'll come back out onto the grass trail again. See, and here we are. So, same as if you're going, you happen to be going this direction, you see this. This one does have a sign there, it shows it, but the other side didn't. Don't think the trail ends there. Just go through the woods and you'll come back out the other side. All right, now we're somewhat at the end of one of the loops. Remember I told you when we come in, there's two loops here. Now this, well, I should take you out to a dead end road. And I think that's an access point for park rangers and stuff. You go back this way. We're still sort of on, well, we actually are, on a loop, a, uh, a little Darby loop. I'll show you that here in a second. But that down there, is where we come in. That's where the pavilion, the porta potty, and all that stuff is at. Is down there. That's where we started at. That's where we come in. That's where I told you to go right to site three, go left to site four. Now, if you went left to site four, you would have come down this way, and this is where you would be at now. So this is one loop. And I told you there was actually two loops back here. This is the second loop over here. And this is going to take you to site four. See, and there's a little stream I told you that you would cross. Now, this is another loop. Now, you can go left or you can go right. Right's going to be mostly grass. Left is going to be mostly woods. If you want to get to site four quick, go to the left. It's not real quick, but it's quicker than if you went to the right. So the choice is yours. Right, a little longer and probably easier. Left, a little quicker and a little more rugged. We're gonna to go to the left because I want to get to it as soon as possible because it's getting to where people are gonna be coming out here for the night. And I want to get there before somebody you know, sets up camp and then I won't be able to videotape. So now we're heading to site four. Okay, now we're at site number four. Um, show you where it is from the trail. The trail is right here. Okay, this is a trail. So it's fairly close, but this is actually the most popular site. It goes fast. Somebody will be here tonight, guarantee it. If you want site four, you gotta definitely book early because this seems to be the most popular site. It is also the furthest site from the parking lot. So remember, if you're coming here, you're gonna walk the furthest to site four. Again, you got a pit, you got a table, which is <laughs> chained up, and you got two sites here. Not a lot of playing room. It's probably the smallest of the sites as far as space. But again, it's the most popular site. 
it books faster than I think any of the other ones. Every time I try to get this one, it's always full. Uh, so I, that's why I'm always at three. Three books fast too. But this is site four. Like I said two two uh, uh, spots, picnic table, fire pit, um, trails just right over there. It's not that close to the river. But you can probably walk and I'd say the river's probably maybe a hundred yards over that way. I'm just guessing. So it's not on the edge of the river. So if you want water, bring water with you unless you want to trek down to the river. So this is site number four. And that's all the sites. Four sites at Battelle Darby Creek backpacking uh, camping sites. If you want a book, you got to reserve them. You can't just come out here. You must reserve them. Go on their website, backpacking, and reserve the site. They are free, but they are first come, first serve. So if you know a date that you want one, get them early. Uh, unless they change it this year, they are open seven nights a week versus the ones at Scioto Grove. I think they're only open on Fridays, Saturdays, and maybe Sundays, only on weekends. But these here, as of last year, they were open every night of the week. So you may have a chance of getting one during a weeknight, easier than a weekend. But there's nobody here yet. I'm not sure. I can't remember what time check-in time is. But I guarantee somebody will be here. So those are the four sites. So... We're going to continue on around this loop and head on back out. 